Hey guys, and welcome back to the Matthew 514 podcast. Today, I'm so excited because I have my leader, Aaron Jenkins, on here. And when this video comes up, um, Raven has already been on the podcast. Yep. So if you guys listen to the podcast with Raven Jenkins, that's Aaron's sister. Um, and I shared, I mentioned you a lot in the podcast. Um, and I shared how both of you guys have like been like such influential people in my life and share so much wisdom. So I'm super excited for you guys to hear what Aaron has to share because he has a ton of wisdom and I know that you guys are going to walk away learning at least one thing and he's very funny, very down to earth. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy this podcast so much. And he's the first guy that's going to be on this yeah. podcast, which is super fun because hopefully we can see things from a different perspective yeah. Yeah. Um, versus just having the girls on the podcast. So, everyone say hello to Aaron. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, You're welcome. That's a lot to live up to, so I'm, don't, don't have your expectations too high. But in front of everybody, uh, Carter, I'm very, very proud of you. Thank um, you. You and I got coffee, I don't know, really not that long ago, and you shared a lot of your dreams and your visions. Um, and it's been really cool to take a front row seat to see you put that into action. So, uh, if anything you learn from Carter, put your dreams into action because you're going to make a difference. So, excited to be here. Thanks, guys. Well, that was a great introduction, too. I'm so <laughs> totally love to. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that's a really great point already off the bat. So, today we're going to talk about something, I guess, a little bit more controversial. I think something that a lot of people tiptoe around. Um, and they want to hear the truth, and they want to know the truth, but they don't know what the truth is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that this topic, we live in a world where there is so many opinions about it, yeah. it's hard to find the yeah. truth. And we're really just going to talk about what it looks like in this world to be a godly man and woman, okay. um, and really how to live that out, yeah. no matter what title you're in relationally as well, whether it's in friendships, yeah. um, dating, engagement, marriage, um, what it really looks like to be a godly man and woman in this world that sets a lot of wrong standards. Yes. So, Aaron, what are some of your top, you know, pieces of advice for what it looks like to be a godly man and woman? Yeah. Um, I'll give a, a picture. Okay. There, there is a uh, a book I believe is called Power of Habits, and it talks about goal setting. It said the best goals to set aren't necessarily numerical goals, but people goals. So, what they mean is um, if you want to lose weight, don't necessarily set a goal of uh, eating only lettuce. Mm -hmm. Rather, have a picture in mind of someone that you want to look like. Okay. And every time you're tempted to eat a brownie or something, ask yourself, would, for me, it's Zach Efron. Would Zach Efron <laughs> like eat, eat, eat this brownie? And the answer is no, because that's a person will. Um, so that's, I have that for us today before we get into it. Um, and I know it's cheesy and cliche, but Jesus, he, he's the ultimate man. He, he's not, um, he didn't just come to show us what it looked like to be a Christian. He, he came to show us what it looked like to be a human being, to be a son, to be a brother, and also what it looks like to be a man. So before I describe that, I think it's, I think it's Jesus. That is so good. I've never, I've actually never thought of it like that before. Yeah. And I think that that's very practical because I think, whether people realize it or not, they have that person in their mind. Yeah. And most of the time, it's not Jesus. Yeah. Um, and even if it's a great person in their life or a leader in their life yeah. that they're trying to model and be like, it's easy to then idolize that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's really, like, right off the bat, again, yeah. like, so great. Like, if you guys want to be a certain person in life, look to Jesus because yeah. he was perfect. He never sinned. Um, and so any quality that you want to be, yep. like, you can find that in Jesus. Yep. So that's great. All throughout the gospel. Yeah. That you, um, he faced temptation. Mm -hmm. Men, women too. I, I don't even, this sounds weird, but it's a controversial podcast, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, he also showed us what it looked like to be a perfect woman, if you would. Like, yeah. just a perfect human being. He faced temptation. He faced uh, people scrutinizing him. He faced uh, his friends abandoning, abandoning him. Um, and he showed us how we should operate and act and respond to those things. So, uh, yeah, I think Jesus is the ideal man. Yeah, and like you said, like even creating like a perfect woman image, I've heard. And I think it might have, it was either you or Gracie who said this, who said, um, I think it was you, God is a father and mother mm -hmm. to like both. So yeah. people who, you know, don't have 
their mom or dad or both, you know, yeah. in the picture, yeah. Jesus can be that yeah. and fill that with. But it's not even filling a void. Like, he needs to have that central place in yeah. our lives. Um, I think that leads perfectly into, like, okay, so how to be the godly man or woman, we need to look to Jesus. So then from that, what are qualities that we should inhabit and yeah. live out if yeah. we're going to be like Jesus? That's great. That's great. Uh, that is a tough one. I, I, it's sort of like you could go on for days. Uh, I would give. Um, I'll share the ones I think we we need in our generation. Okay. Um, I don't know. It could be different for different generations. Um, in Matthew eighteen, I believe it is, or eleven. I don't know. Somewhere in there, it's a famous verse. Okay. He, he says, "If you're if you're tired, if you're weary, some of your burdensome, come to me, and I'll give you rest." Mm-hmm. Then he describes his character. He says, For I am gentle and lowly. Follow me, and you'll find the rest of your soul. Um, so I, I think in our generation, we need men who are gentle. It doesn't mean they're weak, but it just means they're gentle. They, uh, another translation says he's meek. It, it, that word literally means to have power, but it's under control. Um, and uh, he's humble. I think too many men are prideful or they're insecure or they're arrogant or they're boastful or um, they're riddled with anxiety. But we, we need men who are humble, that they have a sober mind about um, who they are and who God's called them to be. Um, yeah, and yeah, uh, those are two. Those are two. Um, I think to put a very, not unbiblical, but a modern word to it, I would say, I would say gentleman. I, yeah. I think I think Jesus was a gentleman in all areas. I think that's so great, and that leads kind of to somewhere I want to go that is more, you know, controversial because you talked about, you know, a man being gentle. Yeah. And um, I think in our world is very confused. We live in this mindset. It's like either or. Yeah. It's like either a man is a gentleman and strong. they're weak, yeah. or they're you know harsh and mean, so they're not weak. Yeah. But what does in you know, we have the whole thing surrounded with like toxic masculinity and stuff like that. So, how do you think it practically looks for a man to be a gentleman? Yeah. And what does it look like for them to be meek, to have that power, but not live it out in a you know harsh way? Like, what yeah. does that look like? Yeah, that's also a loaded question. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but okay. uh, the kingdom is very much an upside. When I say kingdom, I just mean Jesus' idea for his culture and what the world should look like and act like and operate. Um, so his idea of what being a gentleman looks like is very different from ours. Um, so being a gentleman, uh, I think um, humility um, is not just quietness. It's not mm-hmm. just being quiet. Humility is uh, the ability to serve others, to put others' needs before. So Philippians two says that it says, um, "Do not be um, do do not be uh, ambitious or conceited." Um, but it says, "Put the needs of others. Count others' needs more significant." Uh, I think that's the true definition of humility. It's not that you're some guy hiding behind a curtain, you're afraid to face life, but you're a guy who is confident enough in who he's called, who he's called to be, and who God has called him to be, uh, that he's able to put. Whoever it needs to be for itself. So uh, practically, I think I think it's the various holding doors open for people. Uh, we're in a world where it's like hurry, rush, business, blah blah blah. Um, but slowing down the whole doors open. Yeah. Um, paying for somebody in front of you. Uh, it could be a, mom, a single mom. It could be an elderly helping elderly across the street. Uh, it, it looks like. Um, it looks like being willing to have difficult conversations without losing your like That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. That, I mean, that led it to so many different things in my mind. Yeah. And I loved how you brought up the Bible verse. It's seeing others as more important than yourself. And it's so funny that you brought that up because um, in the book that we read in Raven and Amber's small group, okay. Um, so Amber is his wife. And then Raven, She's amazing. Yes, she is. That's awesome. And then Raven's a sister. Um, and so I was in their small group, and we read the book You Who, okay. um, which is like talking about your identity in high school. I didn't read it during small group because I already had books set up, and I was like, okay, once small group's over, I'm going to read it. Right. Kind of like, you know, I thought it'd be a fun way to, 
you know, yeah. after talking about it, then going into reading it. Um, and so I've been reading it, and it talks about how that verse, if we lived that out, then we wouldn't have all these, like, problems in this world. And one, I mean, it's a controversial podcast, so I'm kind of glad it's got right up with abortions. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was saying how um, our world is so, like, based on philosophies. Yeah. and. We think that we're the writers of our stories, and so we're the writers of our stories, and, you know, something gets added in there that we don't like, we can unwrite it. So we can, you know, take that baby out, and we can not love that person, and we can act how everyone, and she kind of said, like, okay, I'm going to be a fitness girl, and I'm going to drive this car, and I'm going to hang out with these people, and edit, edit, edit. Versus, no, like, we're called to love others, you know, yeah. greater than we love ourselves. Yeah, Us who love ourselves. Um, and so I think that that's, like, so great because yeah. that connects to, like, the whole point of identity. And in order to be a godly man or woman, you need to know your identity in Christ. Absolutely. Um, and I love how you said that quiet confidence because I've been around as the person I dated this past year. Yeah. Um, I think he did lack a lot of confidence. Okay. And so I think that, um, and not in a hateful mean way, it's, you know, kind of a place of love. Like, I wish he had yes. that confidence. Yes. Um, because I think that with that, some of the things he did, they were not what a godly yes. man would do. Yeah. Um, and there was just a lot of lack because there was a lack of confidence. Absolutely. Um, I think that's so great, and I want to then, like, transition to what that looks like for a woman, because the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4, uh, it talks about a woman having that quiet spirit, yes. so, and we had mentioned, you know, kind of talked about this before, but we're both, like, loud people, yeah. um, yeah. we got loud, you know. We just can amplify our voices. Yes, yeah. um, and... But what does that look like? So how do we live out the quiet spirit if yeah. we have a bold, loud personality? I love that. Um, great question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get super nerdy, but okay. you went there, so I'm going to Okay, that. that's okay. Richard Foster, he is, uh, he's like a guru in spiritual disciplines. Like he wrote a book called the Celebration of Disciplines. Great book. Okay. Um, he said that, uh, the devil majors in three main things. Like, he, he's a master in three main things. Muchness, manyness, and noise. He's not so worried about making us bad as he's worried about making us busy or uh, distracted. Uh, some other people say that busyness and hurry are of the devil. I promise you don't. Okay. I have found that it is hard um, or that they, the essence of that book Verse to live a quiet life has less to do with our um, the the sound or the volume of our voice, and more of the sound and the volume of our inner spirit. That's awesome. So it's calling us to live this still spirit. It's calling us to have this stillness. The the psalmist says, "Be still and know that I'm God." It's not just talking about a physical act, but an inward disposition and posture of, of being still and quiet. That I, any given point of time, you can hear the voice of God. You can sense the leading of God. So I think for people who are loud like us, it's it's less to do. Not okay. There are times where we just need to be quiet. Like yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it's it's an invitation to people like us to learn how to still be ourselves and live in our personalities, but but operate with this inner quiet and peace and sense of the Holy Spirit. I think that's so good, and I know like. I think that can put for a lot of people their thoughts into words of yeah. how because I know for me there's a difference in my spirit in the way I'm being loud, if that yeah. makes sense. Oh, it's and so true. like no matter what I'm loud. Yeah. Like I just always am. And I'm like if you ask anyone in my family, I'm the most talkative person. Okay. Um and I keep the conversations going. The other day we were waiting um for our reservation at a restaurant yeah. and we were waiting in the car and everyone put out their phones and I was like that is like, yeah. come on, yeah. you know. Um, I'm about to be going to college. My sister's going to be going back. I was like, we need to enjoy our family time. Yeah. So I, you know, I put up my phone, but I put up questions to ask my okay. family. I was like, guys, we're asking yeah. questions tonight. And I, you know, just got like talking with them and stuff like that. But I also, and like my spirit was at rest. And yeah. when I was yeah. loud. I was yeah. talking. Yeah. But like it came, I think it comes from the motive too. Mm-hmm. What is your motive for that? And so like my motive was just to connect them. And my spirit was at rest, but when I'm like, and I see it the most, honestly, when I'm with my sister, which is kind of funny, 
Um, because I think we like feed off of each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, hey, we're twin sisters, yeah. so what else can you ask for? But I think sometimes it I explain it, it feels like a striving and straining that mm, That's great. Um, my soul isn't at rest and it's not even like it's not like I'm trying to fight for her attention or yeah. I don't even feel like I need to be a certain way when I'm around her, yeah. but I think I'm acting in that mindset. Okay. Um, if that like makes sense, um, and so it's like, what is the motive of our loneliness? And I think that's going to determine. Okay, is our heart at rest? If our motive is good, then it's like this going to be at rest. Yeah. If it's not good, then it's not going to be at rest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so in our world that is so fast paced, instant gratification. I love how slowing down applies both to male and female absolutely. for how to be a gentleman and how to have that quiet spirit. Absolutely. Um, and I just think it did like a. Full circle full just circle. now, um, which I think is so fun, um, and that's how we connect everything. Like if we yeah. just slow down, yeah. we'll connect back to you know being gentle, yeah. being meek, yeah. being that quiet spirit, yeah. and then therefore being like Jesus. Oh my gosh! Absolutely. Um, and because and you talked about this actually in this room that we're in right yeah. now when you were doing a small group or youth group, you were saying um, Jesus walked everywhere. So he had to be so he yeah. didn't have cars or yeah. bikes, like yeah. he had to walk. So um can you like talk about that a little bit yes. and how that like can how we can see how Jesus slowed down? I would love to this, okay. I, I love talking slowness so okay. so, Um so I, I point out I pointed out the fact that Jesus was slow for a few reasons, or that he walked for a few reasons. The Greek, which the New Testament is primarily written in Greek, um, it's not that they missed out the word run or speed or quick. You see other times in the Gospels in the New Testament that they use that word. Um, even his mode of transportation, a boat, they, they didn't move the boat. They weren't like hustling and bustling to get across yeah. the, the lake or the sea. Or that. They, it was slow. It was slow. They didn't have motorboats or anything. Like yeah. Um, no cars. He never rode a horse. Even, even his triumphal entry. He rode a donkey. No, just a super slow animal. A super slow animal. And and that was intentional. It's, it's humble. Um, he was slow in conversations. Uh, the woman called him adultery. He was slow to respond to the accusers. He didn't get up and yell at them, and he didn't get up and yell at her. He stayed there. He was drawn. I don't know what he was drawn, but he was indifferent towards it. He just slowed his life down. Um, and I believe the motive behind it wasn't just that he'd have a quiet inner spirit. Um, it's so that he could become a person. Uh, I found this in my life that when I'm always in a rush and I'm always hurried, it's harder for me to be loving. That that uh, if I am always in a rush and I'm hurry and Amber says something, then I'm more likely to snap at her because she's messing up my agenda and my plan. Yeah, it's um just like what TJ talked about yesterday. Yes. It hurts literally what he talked about. Um, he talked about FOMO, not fear of missing out, but fear of missing opportunities. Um, and he said, like, if we're running around life with blinders on, yes. we're going to miss out That's on the perfect. opportunity to love people. Yeah. So Jesus was slow because he didn't miss any opportunity. That's great. That is great. Um, and I, I love, love, love how when I asked you for qualities, I was kind of expecting you to just give a list of them okay. and be like, um, you know, you should have good listening ears, yeah, yeah. you know, you should outserve each other, yeah, you should do this, you should yeah. do that. But instead, you came with a posture of the heart. Mm. Because we can spend all day giving a list of Absolutely. qualities, but if we give a posture of the heart, all those qualities will flow from Totally. Um, That's amazing. And so if we have a slow heart like Jesus yeah. did, then we're going to have good listening Absolutely. ears. And we're going to seek to outserve and, yeah. you know, we're going to have kind words yeah. like the Bible calls us to. Um, so I love that it was a heart posture, not just a to do and yeah, all the things. Because then I think another thing, too, is that when we have that, because I created my future husband yeah. this before. <laughs> and I think, like, no, don't get me wrong. Some people, they make them and, like, the person checks it off to a T. But I think another thing with that that's so wrong is sometimes, like, Jesus doesn't always have that person in the sense that, like, he wants someone different than what we wanted to push us in a yeah, different so way. Now, obviously, there's things that we shouldn't, you know, give up. Yeah. But with more when it comes to personality. Yeah. So be less worried, I guess, about the personality yeah. and more worried about the heart. Because if the heart is right, then the personality will fall. I told her. Um, Amber, so I, I did the list, but I didn't quite do personality. Mm -hmm. And if I would, I guarantee you, 
the personality I would have written would not have been. It's not Amber. Yeah. Not, like me and Amber's personalities are completely different. Yeah, definitely. So I, yeah. I second that, and we've been married almost five years now, and I love him. I've spent the rest of my life with him. But yeah. uh, he just has a better vision for our life. Yeah. Um, the first time, because I knew you for a couple years actually before, because I really got to know Amber this past year. Yeah. When I met her, I was like, holy cow, like she yeah. is so different I than Aaron. It. And I actually, it's funny because I was talking with, it got brought up with Raven yesterday, because we heard not yesterday, the other day. And because she said that growing up, you were like quiet when you were a kid. And I actually was like, do you think one of the reasons why they work so well for each other is that? Like, she brings out a side in him that, like, the world, I mean, didn't taint, but, you know, yeah. as life has gone on, like, you kind of lost sight of, yeah. like, she brings you back down and slows yeah. you down. And everyone was like, 100%. Absolutely. Um, and so I love that, that sometimes the person that God gives us yeah. is different than, we, like, than we would think because they're going to grow things in us Absolutely. that we couldn't grow in ourselves. Totally. Uh, um, I was talking with um, Jada. She's on staff here. And... Um, as I've, as I've tried to become more and more like Jesus, I realized, uh, not necessarily that I'm not going, but the volume in which I live my life is actually a defense mechanism. Oh. So the more I've been with my wife, who is more reserved and quiet, it, it forced me, not forced me, but it did draw that out of me. And the more it drew it out of me, the more I realized I was like, oh, this is, this is a part of my life that I've missed and I've craved. Yeah. Um, and it's taught me how to be meek. It's taught me how to control the volume. And now I know when I am loud, it's out of a pure heart, not just because I want attention and yeah. control of a room and stuff like that. So, yeah, I totally agree. Amber's amazing. And I think that's so great that, like, by you guys both seeking to be like Jesus, you were able to bring that out in each other. And it makes me think of in John 15, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, the vine and yeah. the branches. And it's a classic, like, I heard it when I went through the breakup because... Yeah. It was saying, you know, Jesus is going to cut out any branch that doesn't yeah. produce fruit for yeah. him. Mm -hmm. um, but he, like, he might prune back the others, or yeah. he's going to leave the ones that are producing yeah. fruit. And so, you know, you and Air, um, you and Amber being together, yeah. you've been able to produce more fruit than if you guys were apart. Yeah. And I think that's exactly like a standard to see. Okay, is a relationship, even a friendship, yeah. and good? That's really is it producing more fruit? Yeah. Um, and it's really, really hard. It's impossible yeah. to do that apart from Jesus. So. If, you know, you that person, and that's like, don't be unequally yeah, yoked. Yeah. So if you, and it's okay, I think, like with friends, yeah. you know, acquaintances, not always we're going to be believers, yeah. and you need that so you can Absolutely. be the light. But when it comes to like relationally and like your close friends yeah. who are going to, you know, you open up to, yeah. you need people who are modeling a life of, like, you know, that Jesus lived um, so that the fruit can be produced just yeah. like it's been, you know, between you and Amber. Our marriage, friendships, all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible verse, um, Proverbs 31, 25 through 26, okay. which if you guys don't know what that is, it says, she has close strength of dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. And then, um, I think the 26th part, yeah. I don't know what that says. Like, what, uh, yeah. We got our Bibles. Uh, what version do you have? I have NLT. Okay, I have NLT. So, we can do a little compare and contrast. Um, so Proverbs 31 is actually all talking about um, what a godly wife looks like. Um, and I mean, we could spend a whole podcast, on this. I mean, a whole multiple podcast yes. on this. Um, because I think that there's so many verses in here that are misinterpreted or confused. Yeah. Okay. And I think that this verse is a beautiful verse, but it's very overused mm -hmm. in the sense that I don't always think people know, you know, what it actually looks like. I think it's just yeah. thrown around. Okay. Um, so it says, she has close strength and dignity and she laughs out fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of the times the verse is just seen with 25, but not with 26 okay. in there. And so I just really want to talk about what does this actually look like in our Great, lives? great. Oh man, you have been talking about wives. <laughs> very well. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, okay. So all throughout the Bible, you see language like clothed or crowned or garments or like something put on. So what's interesting is uh, 
it's not necessarily something she clothes herself with, even though it says she's clothed with strength and dignity. It doesn't quite say she clothes herself with strength and dignity. Um, it's a lot like the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is not something you and I produce. Um, we're not, we don't clothe ourselves with righteousness. Um, Psalm 103 says he, he redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Um, so I'll first say this, and maybe it's because I'm a fanatic about intimacy with Jesus. To be clothed with strength and dignity, um, uh, which I believe leads to speaking with wisdom and a kind tone, um, is produced from a place of intimacy with Jesus. It's not, it, Proverbs 31 isn't necessarily just a woman you can come. It's not just a woman you say, I'm going to be a problem, even though there's mugs and stickers and portraits and all that crap. Yep. Oh, I don't know if I say crap on there, but. Oh, yeah, I say crap. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, it's not just somebody you're like, you know what, I'm going to be this person. It, it's someone you, you are transformed into through intimacy with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I, I know I didn't quite talk about this, but to be clothed with strength and dignity. Uh, is a work of the Spirit. Um, to speak wise words is a work of the Spirit. To have a kind tongue is a work of the Spirit. So, uh, this, more than anything, is a call to be intimate with Jesus. I think that's so good because I feel like in our day and age, that is the opposite of what it's seen as. Yeah. It's just seen as, like you said, I'm just going to be this way. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I think it even is more just like a flashy thing. Yeah. It's more just like, it's the go-to girl yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. the go-to girl power verse. And it's like, no, like we miss so much yeah. when we numb it down and yeah. water it down. Um, and I know like Raven, she's so passionate about Philippians 4.13. Yeah. We talked about that in the podcast, yes. um, that it gets very watered down, very misconfused. Yeah. And once again, it all connects back. Like you need Jesus yes. in order to be yes. these things. Um, and like you said, the transforming, it makes me think of... Um, let me, what is that Bible verse where it's like, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's like, um, Don't do, yeah, yeah, do not be informed by this world, um, but be transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. Absolutely. And that only happens with Jesus. Absolutely. Um, so if like men, you know, for advice for men, like look for a godly woman, does she have intimacy That's with great. Jesus? That's great. Okay. Women, if you're looking for a man, does he have intimacy with Jesus? Yes. It's not just... Oh, he goes to church on Sundays. Yeah. Oh, he has this, you know, Bible verse tattooed on his yeah. arm. Yeah. Oh, he keeps the Bible by his bed. No, is he opening up and reading yes. um, Is he spending time? And is he living on yes. that Bible verse on his arm? Is he putting to practice what he's learning at church? Yeah, that's like, great. are you seeing, like we're talking about, are you seeing the fruits in his life? Yeah. Because if you're not seeing the fruits in his life or her life, then the fruit in your life is going to start to die if you come oh, in um, And I know that's harsh, yeah. but like I lived that out firsthand, first experience. Yep. And I know, like, you go in thinking, oh, I'll change them. Oh, oh no. And, oh, yeah. they've got a good foundation. I'll build it up. No, like, you need to be running at the same pace in um, the race. And it says, like, you know, we're running a race. Yeah. Um, and it's not, like, a race. It's not a competition race in the sense, it's like, yeah. But it's a race to just get to Jesus. Yeah. Um, and the end goal is heaven. The end goal is Jesus. Yeah. And so if that person is not going to help you get there, then That's they're true. not worth your time um, because you, you just are better than that. It's yeah. simply, you know, put as it is. Yeah, I love it. I, I think uh, something you said <clears throat> um, as far as expectations and who your guy or girl, whether they pass or up. Um, some people might disagree. I don't really care. But uh, you will not find Mr. Perfect and you will not find Miss Perfect. Um, you might not even find someone that lines up all of these. I think one of the most important things to look for um, is their pursuit. It is that. It's intimacy with Jesus. Um, more than do they already have all the character traits I want, it's do they show that they are genuinely passionate about Jesus? Are they a person of prayer? Are they a person of the word? Are they a person that's committed to community? Because um, I'll take a person that, that has all three of those, but with some flaws over a person who looks good right now, but is missing those. Because when life gets hard, uh, they have nothing to sustain them, and those character traits are going to go down the drain. But the person who is, I wouldn't, I'm not 
telling you to date somebody that's shaky, but someone that's not quite perfect yet, but is consistent in the pursuit, over time, they will become the man you pray for, the woman you pray for. That's so, so awesome. Yeah. And I think that connects to like the evaluation process with somebody because a lot of the times, People in the beginning of dating That's relationships, so true. they look awesome. They look like everything you ever wanted. Um, but then a month later, two months later, three months later, you start to see these, you know, character traits in them that weren't there before. And, I mean, in all the breakup songs, and stuff, it's always like, I wish I could go back to the beginning. Yes. I yes. wish I could have the beginning. And I talked to my mom about that, you know, when I went through the breakup, I was like, I wish I could just date that yeah. person I did in the beginning. And she's like, <laughs> but the reality, Carter, is that person was just a lot. Yep. That person was just a um, front yep. to pull you in, um, to get, you know, to win you over. Yeah. But then once they had you, they started to lose you because they yes. showed who they really yep. were. So that's why it's important to take time and evaluation yep. and not just rush into things. Yep. Really get to know somebody who they are. That's another sort of thing. I don't even want to get into like purity though, because that could be one of those but that's why like waiting to have like to have sex till marriage is yep. also a big thing because if you bring that in in the beginning before you even know them, and then you realize you don't actually like them or like who they are, but you have this physical and mental and spiritual connection with them, it makes it a whole lot harder to walk away because mentally you view them as your spouse now, and spiritually you do when that's actually not what they are, and that's just very, very messy to be in. Yeah, don't want to touch with the same Yeah. Um. So I think that's that was just, so awesome in itself. Um, and then the last thing that I want to connect it all back to is a Bible verse that's misunderstood a lot as well. And I think a lot of men use it in yep. a controlling way right. as the one where it says, husbands, you're called to submit to your wives. And I think so the you know feminist movement and stuff, I think they created that kind of probably from that a little bit because Men took it and used it in a controlling way, and women felt misused and misunderstood. Um, and I think now, like, we don't see that submission even in Christian households, yeah. um, even in people who are intimately pursuing Jesus. And so, I know that we could spend once again a whole podcast on this, but what are some basics for what that should look like and what it should be? Great. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, I'm going to speak quickly. Okay. In Ephesians 5, they skip the first verse in this uh, thought. They typically go to wives submit to your, um, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Um, typically, people skip the whole verse 21, which says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And they also tend to skip verse 25, which is husband, love your wives. I think they keep that, but they love, leave this part out. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So a few thoughts. Uh, I, I think submission is viewed as an ugly word, but it's not. Um, when, when, when we talk about submitting to God, it's not, it's not a, an acceptance of, uh, weakness, it's just, it's an, uh, an embrace of his power, saying, I can't do this in my own power, I'm going to do it. And for clarity, you're not submitting to your husband's power. You're submitting to your husband, whatever that may look like, as an act of saying, God, I trust your power. Not, not, because here's the truth, man, I am, I am not powerful. I don't hold a lot of authority. But when Amber chooses to submit to me out of respect, she is, and she is coming under the power of and I'll actually say this, um, and people can say what they want to say, it's controversial. Yeah. I think submission, I'm going to nerd out. I know, okay. I'm not going to talk to them, but I'm, okay. uh, Submission already is one of the most difficult things for human beings to do, right? God asks you to give up coffee. That is hard to submit to and surrender, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you might be able to do it. Uh, still, that's difficult, right? Uh, That's difficult to do with a perfect God, a perfect Father, a perfect loving, and a perfect gracious King. That's hard to do with somebody that's perfect. It is way more difficult than to submit to an imperfect person, an imperfectly loving person, an imperfectly gracious person. So, like, God isn't calling you to be this weak person. He's calling you 
to be an incredibly strong person. Uh, he's, he's calling you to do an incredibly strong thing. Likewise with husbands, that you would love your wives as Christ gave his life for the church. He's calling you to die. He's calling you to put her preferences over your preferences. He's calling you to sacrifice your time, your energy, your money in order for her to fall more in love with Jesus and become who God has called her to be. It, it's submission and love is a, it's a deep, meaningful, strong, powerful call. Oh, wow. That's great. And I like how, even though it kind of comes across as harsh, like it's not going to be easy. Yeah. But I think that's kind of good because if you don't go in... You know what, like, if you go in thinking it's going to be easy, then yeah. you're probably going to fail a lot. Absolutely. But if you go in knowing, like, okay, this is going to be hard, yeah. I can't do this on my own, yeah. I need Jesus, I need godly community, yeah. I need to be surrounded by the right things in yeah. my life, then when it's hard, you're going to be more big to, you know, put your big boy pants Absolutely. on or big girl pants on and live it out. Yeah. Um, that is so great. And I feel like this podcast wasn't the wishy-washy, yeah. Yeah. you know, watered down stuff, but it was, hey... This is the truth. This yeah. is what we need. Um, it wasn't a bunch of list of qualities. Yeah. You need intimacy with Jesus. Yeah. And when you slow down with Jesus and you become, yeah. you know, that slow thinking and slow acting like he is, yeah. then everything else is going to follow. Um, and that's what you need to look for in friends and in relationships. Yeah. Um, go to the Bible for what it says, yeah. but know, like, you need to make sure you know the real meaning of it, not the world's meaning Absolutely. of it. Because um, there are two very big differences. Yeah. Well, that was really great. I'm going to ask you okay. what the challenge is now. Yes. Um, so what is your challenge to our listeners to go out and be the light? Slow down. I think slow down. Uh, if that means slow down while driving, slow down in your morning routine, slow down and um, slow down in your nighttime routine, slow down uh, in school. If, if some of you are in college or in high school and you're watching, slow down in the hallway, slow down and see people. Uh, don't miss the opportunities, like TJ was saying, to be the love of Christ to somebody and, and hear the voice of God. Anywhere you feel rushed or anxious, just decide to slow down. I think that's so great, and I want to add to it, like, slow down on in your interactions with others, yeah. especially because I know, I think about it in my life, but I'm leaving the house, yeah. and, you know, I'm falling behind in my time, and whatnot. Yeah. it's so easy for me to know that my mom is home because she works from home, to just be like, bye, like, I love you, see you later. Yeah. And, you know, not always give her a hug and stuff like that. But slow down with the people in your life. Actually give them a hug. You know, actually tell them that you love them. Um, because I think it's such a great reminder, you know, not everyone is always going to yeah. be there. And you never want to live with the regret that you didn't. Yeah. You know, make time for the people that you loved or, you know, tell them that you love them and show it to them by giving them a hug and slowing down. So yeah. slow down in your personal life and in your relationships with totally them. Agree. Super great. Well, have you guys enjoyed this podcast? Um, I think it's going to touch a lot of people. I think it's going to really impact a lot of relationships. I know I feel impacted. So thank you so much, Karen. Um, And I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you, guys. Yes.